Hi, I'm Rob Cosm. Welcome to my shop. Our topic today is hand planing wood, squaring an edge. And we're going to do it using this piece of red oak. This will help you in learning how to prepare stock with just hand tools. I'm Rob Cosman and welcome to my shop. All right, this is the piece of wood we're going to use. It's red oak. I've already made this surface, which is our reference face, flat and smooth. And I verified it with winding sticks. So if you were to lay that on a flat surface, it would not rock. We checked it to make sure there's no wind or twist. There's no hump in the middle. Now, if you miss that or you want a refresher on it, if you check out this video, it'll walk you through that whole process. Now, in the process of squaring an edge and straightening it, there's lots of ways you could do it. You could use your power jointer. You could even uh, use your table saw to do it. Either way, you're going to be left with mill marks on the edge. Now, you can sand those off, but I'm going to show you with a hand plane, it's faster and it's actually superior. And since you're going to need the hand plane to remove the mill marks anyway, I'm going to teach you how to do the whole process just using your hand tools. So much more quiet. Stay with us. We'll walk you through the process, step A, right through to the bottom. All right, let's start off with the equipment. These are three planes that you're probably familiar with. This is the smoother. This happens to be a four and a half. This is the jack, which happens to be the five and a half. And this is the jointer, which is a number seven. Now, typically, if you're wanting to straighten or flatten, this one is going to be out. Why? Well, the sole is too short, and it'll have a tendency to ride hills and valleys instead of leveling them off. This, on the end, the number seven, which is 22 inches long, would be your best choice. However, this board is not that long, and I can do this job adequately with my five and a half, which just happens to be my favorite plane. Now, I will mention that there's a number six. This is referred to as a four plane. It's not that much longer than the number five and a half, maybe a couple of inches. And if you had that instead of this, well, it would, be, it would do the job just as well. The number seven, if you have it, great. A little bit of overkill maybe for something this size. All right, now, next thing we need to know is what are we going to check it with? Uh, this is a combination square. It's a six inch combination square. It's the one that I travel with usually. What I like about it is it's versatile. You've actually got a bubble level in there for determining when something is level, obviously. You can check a 45 because of this. You can also use it for depth if you would need to check something like that. And it's a good square. So if I'm going to use it in, in square application, I'll lock it down like that. You can also take that rule out and you've got a six inch rule. So, pretty versatile tool. All right, we need to talk a little bit about mechanics. First of all, we want to get the plane set up. Now, if you're not familiar with how to get it to this point, meaning it's sharp, ready to go, check this video and that'll give you a good refresher. But what I want to make sure, and this is critical, this blade must be parallel to the sole. If not, if it's protruding out more on one side than the other, then the problem is every pass is going to throw that edge out of square. So I got a nice, really bright colored background. I'm going to advance the blade by spinning the adjuster knob. Now wipe this sole clean. And I think I'm seeing a little more blade on the far left. I'll just adjust that slightly and then I'm going to retract it. Okay, I've got it all the way in. I'll advance it as I start to work. Now I want to check grain direction and it's pretty obvious that I want to go in that direction but I can verify that with my hand and here's another one of those times where it fools you. You think it's going that way but I'm almost willing to bet that my best planing direction is going to be in this direction. Put that in there and secure it. Now a little bit different when you're doing an edge you want to keep the board in the middle of the blade. So the way I prefer to do it is I have my thumb sitting right here and I use my side of my index finger and the underneath as a fence. So when I set that on there, my index finger, and you've got to develop a bit of a callus in order to make this easy, is underneath, my thumb's right here, and you've got to put a lot of downward pressure because you don't want this thing dropping back before you get started. So my right hand is actually supporting the blade somewhat. By the way, this is a three finger grip, so your index finger is sitting right down there. Somewhat comfortable, not, I'm not squeezing it. And I didn't mean to say supporting the blade, I meant to say I'm supporting the plane to prevent that dropping off. 
thumb right here, in the, in the index finger of my left hand along the side. Now, I'm just going to move my body. I'm not going to move my arms. I'm going to try to avoid moving, moving my arms. The first thing I need to do, and by the way, this is a, mostly a leg exercise. Without advancing the blade, let me just kind of show you this technique first. So if you look at my feet, all of my weight is on my right leg. I'm actually on my heel on my left leg. And as I move forward like that, I end up just pushing a little bit with my right calf as I go through. Now, let me, and let me explain to you where my pressure's, how my applying pressure with my two hands while we do this. Obviously, you have to start with the blade before the edge. So this thumb is pushing down. This finger on the underside is keeping it centered. This rear hand, my right hand, is supporting the weight of the plane. As I start to move, at this point, I'm kind of letting the plane provide all the downward pressure. My two hands are more or less just balancing it so I'm not tipping to the right or to the left. As I get toward the end, I'm going to push down a little harder with this hand so that the plane does not droop as it gets near the end. Okay? So you have to marry all of that so that you're not having to stop and think about it individually, but it doesn't take very long before that all just happens magically and you end up being very exact with your planing. If you may not remember this if you didn't see the previous video, but we bought this from a lumber yard already processed on four sides. So this edge may or may not be square, but it's at least finished and there's no rough surface. However, I do see a little bit of stuff right here. So the first thing I want to do is get this surface free of any defects. So I'm going to start my planing process and I'm using my right hand and I usually typically use my right middle my middle finger on my right hand and I start to spin that adjuster knob and watch to see where the shaving comes out now it seems to be favoring the right side so I'm gonna take my lateral adjustment lever right here my index finger on the side of the blade thumb on the lateral adjustment lever and just squeeze lightly so that I can control it without having a dra really big adjustment now let's try that again seems to be fairly even. I'm going to bring a little more blade out. I'm going to continue until I get a full length, full width, hopefully uniform thickness shaving. Then I know that I've got that surface hopefully on one plane. Not a lot of arm movement. I got to reach out a little bit at the end. Always making sure that Right here, your blade is starting before the edge of the board, or the end of the board. Careful not to allow the plane to dip at the end. Now, I also pay attention, and it's kind of hard to see with oak because the shaving, because of how coarse the wood is, the shaving isn't like it would be on a piece of maple or pine where it is easier to read. But what I don't want to, I want to avoid is having that shaving veer off to the right or to the left. That typically tells me that my blade is not set parallel and if it's going off to the right I'm usually heavier on the on the left side and of course the opposite if it's going to the left but I'm getting wood all along that pass so I now know that that is or hopefully is one plane meaning uh, finished surface front to back all right now what we got to do is check it and see where we are so when I do that I'll make sure and I I teach this a lot, and I'm amazed at how many times I find this. This needs to be kept tight. In order for this to be know that this is square, this must be tightened down so it doesn't move. Now, I'm going to hold the board in my left hand. I'm going to take the square, and I need to have a bright light in the background, especially as you get a little older. Put the uh, body of the tool up against the, remember, you were always working off the reference face. And I'm going to slowly slide that down and see where it makes for contact first. Okay, now it might be hard for you to spot on the camera, but I can tell that I'm actually touching on the inside before I'm touching on the outside. Sometimes you can feel it by just setting it on there and seeing if it'll rock. If it rocks at all, well then it obviously can't be square. That should be sitting there firmly. Now I'm gonna check the far end. Same thing. I check the middle and I'll check this side. Same thing. So what that tells me, 
uh, I gotta make sure. So I'm high on this side. I'm high on the side facing me. So what I'm gonna do next, I'm gonna walk you through the process of how do we adjust for an, for a, 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 an edge that is not perfectly square, and in this case, high on what I would call the inside edge. Okay, before we start this part, let me explain something. There's, there are uh, four conditions that we may have found that edge. We may have found it square, and that would have been shown to us by the fact that there would be no light, and when you set your square on there like that and push on it, it doesn't rock. It could have been high on the outside, it could have been high on the inside, which it was, or worse, it could have been twisted, meaning high on the inside on this end, high on the outside on this end, and then we're gonna show you how to deal with all of those. But the one we're gonna tackle first is that it's high on the inside. So I'm gonna draw some lines. I'm using a dry erase marker because it doesn't penetrate very deeply. So you don't have to worry about having to explain blue marks in your board when it's all done. Okay, uh, let's just remember this again. Yeah, okay, so this side is high. I can't do anything, I don't wanna do anything to the low side. I simply need to bring the high side down to meet it. If you look at the way your plane is made, the blade does not go all the way to either side. So I'm gonna use that to my advantage. And what I'm going to do, since this is the high side, that's the low side, I don't wanna to touch the outside, I'm gonna set my plane so that this side is flush with what is the low side. I'm gonna put my thumb in here and I'm using my finger to keep that in position, meaning I don't want it to slide over. And I'm gonna take a pass and in doing that, I'm only taking material off the high edge. You can see it, I'll, I'll give a little more blade so it'll be a little easier to see. Flush, balance the plane. Okay, so if you can see, I've removed the ink mark from this side. And you, you, the more you do this, the more you'll be able to judge, well, how far should I go? I'm gonna suggest that that was close enough that we may be able to stop there. But if you were to examine that edge right now, it actually would be flat to here. And then at this point, it would kind of head down the other way. So what we need is to have it square and all the way across. So what I need to do is take a one or two full width passes to bring all of this into uh, alignment with that new surface that I created right here. Hopefully our blade is parallel to the sole so that we're not throwing things out of whack when we do that. Okay, now let's check it. Squares tight, lay it against the reference face, hold it up to the light, drop that down, and that looks right on. I don't see any light there at all. I'll check this end as well. That looks good, and I'll check this end. Okay, that looks nice and square. So that was an easy one. I'm gonna purposely throw this out of whack and we'll treat it doing the other way. Not much of a difference, but a little bit. Then I'm going to put a twist in it, show you how to do that. And then I'm gonna show you another technique that will make all of this almost seem, ob seem obsolete, but you can't always do it, so that's why you gotta know how to do this. Give me a second to screw this board up. Okay, I'm gonna check this. I purposely planed this. Okay, so now if you can look and see, the, what will be the outside edge is now high. We'll check it all the way, quite obvious, and a lot more than the other one was. So, planning in this direction. So now the situation is the low side is the inside of the one closest to me, the high side is out here. So what I'm going to do, and I find this one actually easier to work with. Now because that's out a fair bit, I'm gonna advance the blade, take a little heavier pass. And I just like to hold my finger like this. Again, I'm making it so that the blade, which stops shy of the edge, is only going to there. And you can see where the blue marks are. I've preserved that low edge. See if we can't get some idea as to whether or not we're close. No, still high.
Okay, now I'm just going to quickly take one or two passes to get that edge flat side to side because it wouldn't be flat the way we did it because the blade only cut from here. So that surface was still sticking up like that because remember this was high. And what we did is we took that surface down so it would not be straight from side to side. It is now. So let's take this out and check it. I used to be able to tell when I was down in position like that, but now I've got to have the light behind me, or in front of me, I should say. All right, well, we lucked out on that one because we got it first try. That doesn't always happen. Check it in three places, and that looks good. Okay. Now the next one, I'm gonna introduce a twist to this, and sometimes this happens, especially when you're just getting started with this, and it's probably a function of just shifting your weight. Remember, when you're planing the edge, what your primary function is, is to balance that plane so you're not leaning heavier to one side or the other and you're applying the same amount of pressure right down through the center of the board from front to back. Alright, give me a second to screw this one up and we'll come back and fix it. Alright, now I'm going to show you this with a square, but I want to show you how bad it is using the winding sticks. Now it's not a very wide edge, that's why you need to have that little center dot on there. So we'll put that one on the back side this one on the front, and if you sight down there now, you can see how twisted that edge is. Okay? And that'll happen. Now you may not have winding sticks to check it, so let's pull it out of the vise and see what we can identify. So if I go to the back, okay, it's high on the outside edge. In the middle, it's right on, but I would hear it's high on the inside edge. Well, you can't work with that because if you tried to glue that up, you'd never pull the joint tight. So how are we going to fix it? Well, here's how I do it. There may be other methods, but this is one I find best. If you, first of all, understand what has happened. We tend to have the front of the plane guide the cut. So as you're bearing down on the front of the plane, the blade's following along, and then as that board starts to drift off like that, the front of the plane follows it, and of course the blade has to follow the front of the plane, and you just continue to make the problem even worse. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to work with this surface. Don't care about that one for now. The first thing I have to do is I have to get this surface all back on the same plane, meaning no twist. It may not be square, but I got to do this one first. So I'm going to start here, and you'll watch, you'll see this in the shaving. I'm going to plane until I get on most of the plane on the board. At this point, I'm going to turn around and I'm going to put all the weight on the back. And what I want is I want the back of the plane to guide the blade instead of the front. So I will finish the cut. Now I didn't even get anything down there. Do it again. Plane to about there. Switch and have my weight on the back and you'll see that it tapers off. This oak's not a great example because the shaving doesn't stay together very well. But I have a full width shaving right here, if you can see that. Okay. And as I continue, look how it, narrow it gets because there's that twist. And as I, I'm going to go a little further and I get to a point where I hardly have anything at all up here. Now I'm going to advance the blade because that's out quite bad. So rather than take 50 more shavings, we can see we can do it in 10. Now what you should notice is this little shaving near the end should keep getting wider and wider as we get rid of this high edge and we have to bring this high edge down to this low edge. And do one more. Actually I had a little bit of a stutter right there. I'm going to get a little bit of plain wax on there. That would be magic plain wax. Reduces the friction, makes it easier to push the blade through the wood. Okay, I watched that. I had a full width shaving the whole way. Don't know if it's square, but let's look with the winding sticks and see if we were able to bring that surface into a flat plane. And flat doesn't mean square, it just means that it means it's flat. What's it look like, Jake? It 
Okay. Let's have a look. Yeah, it is. So I'm going to purposely pay attention to that. And when I get up here, I'm just going to switch over. And do the same thing we did, meaning slide the plane over so that we're not taking anything off what we perceive as being a high edge. Now let's take a couple of full length passes. Check that again. So check the far end which is showing. Well, that shows right on. Check the middle. The middle's high here. Mark it so I don't forget. Mark the high edge. And back here, it shows a high edge. Now I'm going to turn this around. We're going to actually go against the grain. Only because since this edge right here is square, I'm going to use that to hopefully bring the rest of it into alignment. So I pulled the blade in. I got a nice sharp blade, a very light cut. Even though I'm going against the grain, my throat's fairly tight, but with a light pass, I should be okay. Gonna take a little bit more than that. A little more still. We are taking that high edge off. And remember, I'm going to show you a method that will make this seem almost archaic. All right, let's check that. Still square on this. Square there, and still a little bit out, right at the end. Still a little bit high right here. Now I'm going to just plane it without doing anything and just see if that bears out in the shaving. If it does, then I should have uh, a shaving that is only on this side, not on that side. Yeah, not so. Try that. Remember, always make sure you're referencing or checking off of your reference surface. That's good. That's good. And that's good. Okay. Last thing we're going to do before I show you what I think is the best way to do this, we've got to verify that that edge is straight. Right now it's square to the face, to our reference face, but it may not be straight from here to here, there may be a hump or a hollow, most likely a hump. We'll show it, we'll show it to you, we'll actually we'll identify it, then we'll show you how to deal with it. All right, this is the part that is actually easier with a really long plane. And in this case, I could get a plane that's almost the exact length as if, as, of this. I'll do it with the five and a half, however. So I'm gonna set it here like that, and I'm going to look underneath and see what we've got going on. Now, I'm also going to try to pivot if I can pivot the plane in the middle, then I know I've got a bump. I'm going to use a longer plane and see if that tells me anything different. Now when I'm doing this, I'm tipping it so I'm referencing just off of the edge. Okay, now if that wasn't, if that was um, perfectly straight front to back, it wouldn't do that. So it's showing me that I have a bump. And you'll remember from our video when we were doing the face, that a plane is always going to lead you to having a bump in the middle just because of the way it works and you've got to learn to work around that. So I'm going to use my dry erase marker again. I'm going to run a line down the middle. This is just so that you can see what's happening. Uh, hopefully again the blade is parallel to the sole because multiple passes if my balance is correct and I'm not tipping one side or the other then I shouldn't throw this out of square providing the blade is parallel to the sole. 
So I'm going to assume that the bump is in the middle, so I'm going to take a pass from over here to here. So I'm going to start here, and remember, you always have to lift off while still in a forward motion so you don't leave a skin tag there. So you can see what I've done. I'm going to come back to about here. I'm going to go that much farther on the other side. I'm going to come back here, go that much farther. Now, depending on how bad it was, I may have to go back in and do that again. And if I can pick up wood, that means that I probably still have a bit of a bump. All right, I'm going to go back a little farther. I've left about an inch and a half on either end. I'm going to leave just a half an inch on either end. Come in and check it. Actually, we checked it with the big number seven. Let's do it again. Try to make this consistent. Okay, that doesn't want to pivot. But I'm going to do as a precaution. I'm going to go in there and see if I can get a shaving I can. So I'll do that same bit. Okay, I'm not picking up anything there. Now I'm going to take a pass full length, front to back. I haven't quite made it. Okay, now I don't see any ink. Put the longer plane on there and check. I'm going to run it end to end. I don't see any light and I don't, well, let me see. Yeah, am I forcing it? Possibly. I'm going to go ahead and take another pass. In a full length. Check it again. Okay, that does not pivot. All right, so that's the way to correct. Uh, actually, we've got to check one last thing. to make sure that we didn't throw it at a square. <laughs> if we did, we've got to start all this over again. Square. 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 So we're good. Okay, the last thing I'm going to show you is what I think is the best method, the most foolproof method, for doing this. Okay, now there's a couple of things that you have to have in order for this to work. One is a flat bench that you can trust, nice and smooth, free from any obstruction. You need something like a piece of MDF. I've got a piece of half inch. Something that you know to be flat and equal thickness on both sides. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my reference face I'll use the other edge. My reference face, I'm going to lay it on the bench. I'm going to get my bench dogs out. Keep that right about there. Hold that in. And that board could have been a little bit wider, but it'll do. Now, with that secured, I'm going to set my plane on its edge like that and I'm going to turn this into a shooting board. Now when I'm doing a long or a wide long board like that I like to push directly across from the blade, advance the blade a little bit for a heavier cut. Now the reason I had to prop up the board with a half inch piece of MDF was because the blade doesn't go all the way to the bottom so if I'm laying that right on the on the bench, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to make a full width cut. But by having it raised up like that, I'm up into blade. And I only have to make a couple of passes until I get a full width shaving. And you'll notice that I'm pushing directly across from the blade. I'm using the sole of the plane as a reference for straightening. But the one thing this does for sure, providing of course that the size of your plane are square, is that it guarantees that this edge is going to be square to that face. Let's just verify it and then we'll end our video there. Okay, right on the money. Now, as I said, that I think is the best way of doing it and I could actually do a piece that's almost seven feet long that way. And I usually do. If you enjoy my method of work and like my style of teaching, click on any one of these videos to help take your woodworking to the next level. Now I've always said, better tools make the job so much easier. If you click on the icon with the plane and the chisel, it'll take you to our website, introduce you to all of our tools that we actually manufacture right here, as well as our workshops, both in person and online. Good luck.